please notice with me just a couple passages in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. going to read verses, we're going to read verse 27, and then we're going to read verses 44 through 49. Luke 24. We're going to read verse 27, and then verses 44 through 49, and then we're going to go to the Gospel of John. Luke 24, 27, amen. Uh, if you may, let's read that one. Let us read. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now let's go down to verses 44 through 49 in that same chapter, down to verse 44. Amen. May we read. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. And then in the Gospel of John, chapter 5. And while you're finding John 5, 39, well, we're going to do it now. We're going to do a little bit more reading than that. Let's look at John 5. Let's go back to 18. We're going to read John 5, 18, 24, 26, 27. And Jesus, um, this is just, just by the way, Jesus says in John 4, 34, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Now in John 5, 18, 24, 26, and 27, we find these words. May we read. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father making himself equal with God. Let's go to 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verses 26 and 27. For as the Father hath life in himself, 
so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Amen. Now let's go down to verses, thir verses 31 through 40. That same chapter. Amen. Let's read. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light. Ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that you might have life. John is in the midst of a little dispute. I mean, Jesus is in the midst of a little dispute there trying to tell these pseudo-religious leaders that they have refused him. So they have refused God. Amen. To just kind of understand the flavor of those last few verses we read. Amen. Um, we're talking today. This is a, a first Lord's Day of the month, so it's our communion Sunday, Holy Communion. Amen. And um, I, I was just led about two weeks ago. Um, the Lord led me to start thinking about this um, this message, um, uh, and 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 it's entitled "All or." None at all. All or none at all. Uh, one of my most uh, favorite songs, I, I got so many favorites, but anyway, one that I really, really like is the Richard uh, Smallwood tune center of my joy. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment and hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And as the Lord caused me to think on that song, he brought this word to mind, Christocentric. It ain't that fancy a word, Christocentric. Christocentric. Amen. And, and, and I'm sure if you never heard the word, you can still gather from hearing it that when you hear Christocentric, you're talking about Christ-centered. Amen. Uh, 
one of the challenges in the church of every age, and this age is no different, is that um, we want to bring the influence of the world into the church. And we miss the purpose of the church because the purpose of the church is always church over world so that the influence of the church falls on the world. You don't have the influence of the world falling on the church. Amen? So when we pull in the habits of the world, we are telling the world that we don't have the best stuff. Y'all got the best stuff, and we need to try to pull it in and use it. To be Christ-centered means everything we need. It means our total hope is in who Christ is, what he did, and what he yet are we communicating? Amen. And, and I, I, I think this conversational tone is kind of going to be it for the day. Amen. <laughs> I don't think it's going to get much higher or nothing than this right here. We got to be Christ-centered. Amen. Amen. If, 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 if he is not the center of it all, then he is not Lord at all. I know this sounds so simple, but, but it's, you know, often we make our biggest mistakes on the simplest things. To be Christocentric, it, it, means that I can't let ego rule. That's egocentric. That means the most important thing going on is what I think and what I feel and, and how I say it ought to be. I am ego. Are we communicating? And, 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 and egocentrism pulls at the very fiber of the church because the church is supposed to be in total agreement with Christ. But when we start letting our opinions and our feelings and our thoughts about things direct what the plan of God is, then we pollute the center the Christocentric view with our ego. It's amazing how folk, uh, and, and thank God that's not a problem we have here that I'm aware of, but there are lots of saints who will spend three hours in a, a ministry auxiliary meeting raising hell and don't want to spend an hour in real worship. Who's in control? Can't be Christ. It doesn't take three hours for 30 people to agree on that. But ego makes it about us. Amen. And then we start pushing personal agenda. Amen. 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 I said something a little earlier about how we let what we got to do in Trump. I don't even like using that word, but how we let. <laughs> oh, Lord, forgive me. How we let what we want to do take priority. Over what the Lord tells us to do. So I know I'm supposed to be teaching a class. But I got something to do. I know we 
said, we're going to do this at this time, but I got something else to do. Y'all just go on in. How can we say we love Jesus when even Jesus is at the mercy of our egos? This sounds like a good last sermon. Because <laughs> you ain't got to worry about seeing nobody after the last sermon, but if the Lord says so, oh, there's any last. What are we doing? Hmm? When the will of God becomes subject to us individually. The reason our mom and daddy could keep peace in the home, th th there's no such word, but I'm about to make one up. Because our house was parent-centric. They didn't even get caught up trying to please every one of the seven one of us. Well, what do you want? What do you think? What, uh -uh. Not up in that house. But now, brothers and sisters despising one another because parents trying to make each one of them feel like they're most important. What's most important is obeying the parents. I know I'm sounding like I'm slammed from the 18th century, but this is the truth, right? <laughs> this is the truth, y'all. I ain't telling you that, that we were never allowed to say what we thought or felt about something. But baby, at the end of the day, what James and Jew you say was the gospel. What are we doing? To be Christocentric means simply having Christ at the center. Amen. To be Christocentric means we believe that the nature and the will and the purposes of Almighty God are most clearly seen and revealed through the words and the work of Jesus Christ. Y'all got that? It means when I do what Jesus says, I'm pleasing God. It means when I adhere, when I, when I accept the teachings of Jesus, I'm pleasing God because Jesus came to do the works of the one who sent him. To be Christocentric requires exclusivity. Amen. Now, we are in a time when many folk, including most church folk, think it's all right so if if I cheat, I ought to be forgiven. But if you cheat on me, I ain't going to never forgive you. Amen, brothers? Amen. Go <laughs> tell the truth. That's, 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 a, that's, that's more, more specifically a brother's problem. 
I know that's the truth. Come on, tell the truth up in here now. Oh, Lord. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> but, but even if we, if we affirm that, we know the hypocrisy of it. Amen. Because it's hypocritical to want to be forgiven but to be unwilling to forgive. That's Amen. Now that's a everybody thing, brothers and sisters. Because the word can't lie and the words that all have sinned. Amen. Amen. And the, the word says in order to be, be cleansed, just confess them and, and we'll be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Amen. But it requires exclusivity. And perhaps the fact that, that lots of people think that they can cheat in the natural gets transferred. And we think we can cheat in the spiritual. And when we cheat, Christ is no longer the center. Anybody not understanding what I'm saying? Don't be ashamed. Don't be shy. Because I'll explain it another way. I need us to understand. Because if you understand, you're accountable. Amen? The same way you wouldn't want to be one of two or one of three or one of four or one of infinity in somebody else's life. Christ doesn't want to be one among others in our lives. The Jesus of our faith does not suffer comp competition. Amen. If we allow anything or anybody to compete with Jesus as the center of our joy, Jesus just He already said light and darkness can't coexist. So if you choose darkness, that means I'm, I'm out. How are we communicating? Amen. All or none at all. Are we communicating? Uh, if we pursue the Christocentric model, then errors are minimized. Oh, boy. I wish I had the energy to say this a lot louder, but if we pursue the Christ-centered model, we will make fewer errors. I'm not telling you we won't make any errors, but we will make fewer errors when we pursue the Christ-centered model. You, like I probably heard early on, my mama was the first one I think I heard it from. Mama said, you cannot have your cake and eat it too.
Can't eat it but one time. <laughs> you ain't no cow. You can't regurgitate and chew it over again. <laughs> you eat that cake one time. As I thought about this, the Lord gave me a little illustration, and I looked, I sought, I started to call for some help, and I probably should have, but I didn't. Amen. So, I had to use people. Amen. What I really wanted was the image of an old wagon wheel. Amen. Some of y'all younger children never have never seen a wagon. If you saw it, you didn't know what you were looking at. <laughs> but we used to have people who rode wagons drawn by mules most of the time in our communities. And they had the big old wheels. Amen. Um. They weren't inflated, so they never had a flat. <laughs> well, one man in our community did put some car tires on his. <laughs> I ain't going to say no more because everybody who grew up in my area know who's I'm, who I'm talking about right now. Amen. But he put car tires on his. Mm -hmm. But a car tire won't work well for this illustration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some people. Amen? Amen. So children, watch out. I'm about to use some of y'all. Amen. And, and the, I'm going to tell you the primary reason I'm going to use some of y'all is because if I get that many people like me up here, we ain't going to have enough room. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it's a necessity, all right? So um, um, come on, come on up here, all of y'all. I'm looking at right up, and I see four right here. Yeah, I said, children, I know you out of school, Leslie, but you too. Um, yeah, you willing to come up? You all willing to come up? I, I want to come on. Come on, that's five, six. All right, now what I want, it, come, come on, I'm going to get, come on, I'm going to get you, you come up first, help, help her up, help her up, yeah. You're going to be the center. That means you, Jesus. Now, I want all the rest of y'all to form a circle around her, away from her, arms length from her, arms length. Come on, form a circle around her, a circle. You stay in the center, baby. The center don't move. They move. Come, make a circle this way, too. Or a circle. And circle her. There you go. Come right there, Leslie. There you go. Now, get close enough to put your arm on her shoulder. Don't, don't lay down heavy. Just touch the shoulder, all right? All right. Um... This Jesus, I want all of y'all to use your left hand to put on her shoulder. Your, your other left hand. Your right hand. Your right hand. Use your right hand. All right? Yeah, there you go. Come a little further this way, Leslie. Now use your left hand to put on the shoulder of the person in front of you. Yeah, like put your left. Yeah, this is working. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. This the rim of the wheel. That's the Holy Ghost. Everything that happens in our lives ought to be within the purview of the Holy Ghost. 
Are we communicating? Everything about our lives ought to be connected with the Holy Ghost who is connected with Jesus. So every part of the, the, the circle has an arm on Jesus. That arm is the connection between Jesus. This arm could be my family. So between Jesus and the, and the, the influence of the Holy Ghost is my family. Everything relating to my family ought to be centered on Jesus and controlled by the Holy Ghost. This could be the kind of work I do. Everything about the kind of work I do ought to be centered on Jesus and controlled by the Holy Ghost. That's my family. That's the work I do. Amen? Amen. Th this is my behavior. So everything concerning my behavior ought to be connected with Jesus and controlled by the Holy Ghost. That's my family. That's my career. That's my behavior. This is my countenance. How I look when the world looks at me. Do they see anger? Do they see joy? Do they see resentment? Do they want to see somebody who's ready to fight at the drop of a hat? So everything about my countenance is rooted in Jesus and controlled by the Holy Ghost. So that's my family, that's my career, that's my what? Behavior, there you go. That's my countenance. Because sometimes my, con my behavior can be all right, but my countenance is all jacked up. And sometimes my countenance can be all right, but my behavior be all. Y'all ever met them people who look like they won't crack an egg, but they're the most devilish people in the world? The countenance is good, but the behavior is jacked. Everything about me ought to be rooted in Jesus and, and informed by the Holy Ghost. And this, this wheel could have more spokes. I'm just using enough to make a point. This is my decision making. My decision making comes out of my soul. Amen. Every time I make a decision, my soul speaks. Every decision I make, when I say, what, what, somebody says, what you want to do with your life? I want to be this. No, 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 no. Every decision got to be rooted in Jesus. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Y'all understand what I'm saying? And it's got to be controlled by whom? The Holy Ghost. So nothing ought to get out of bounds from family all the way around to decision making if I stay rooted in Jesus and controlled by the Holy Ghost. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The wheel ought never get compromised if I stay rooted in Jesus and controlled by the Holy Ghost. Every aspect of my being, there is nothing about my life. There's no organization I can belong to. There's no affiliation I can have that is not rooted in Jesus and controlled by the Holy Ghost. Are we communicating? Y'all got that chance? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Everything you say, everything you do, every decision you make, your career goals, everything about you, living a saved life, got to be rooted in Jesus and controlled by the Holy Ghost. Thank y'all. Help the girls down. Let's give the kids a hand. The Holy Spirit is the one who helps to keep things in bounds. Amen. 
So things will come to try to attack my Christocentric worldview. But if the Holy Ghost is intact, it'll be much harder for it to penetrate. That wheel might hit some rough terrain, but if the Holy Ghost is intact, amen? Amen. You see, those, those, those old wagon wheels were, were the, 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 the external part of the hub was wood and the spokes were wood. But the spokes the, and, the, and the thing that wrapped, connected all those spokes was wood, but on the outside of that was metal. We can absorb some things if we keep Jesus the center of our joy. We can bounce back after setbacks if we keep Jesus the center of our joy. The devil may get us for a moment, but he can't keep us too long if we keep Jesus as the center of our joy. You don't lose our joy at the drop of a hat and want to cuss somebody out and tell somebody off. If you keep Jesus, I ain't telling you that it won't hit you from the outside and jar you, but when you remember who you're connected to, glory to God, and when you remember who's empowering you to live that life, I'm telling you you if you it's either all or none at all we run into problems when we want Jesus as the center but we connect it to all other kinds of things and we are not within the confines of the Holy Ghost all None at all. Jesus said, you can't love me in the world. You're going to hate one and cleave to the other. You're going to love one. and you, you, you can't have the best of all worlds. And if we make the decision that that other thing is what we really want, then go on and make a clean break from Jesus. Amen. Just realize when you make a clean break from Jesus, you no longer have the covering of the Holy Ghost. But that Holy Ghost allows us to take a lick, absorb a bump. That's the work of the Holy So the question on this um, communion day, uh, as I look at me, how rooted and grounded am I in Jesus Christ? How Christocentric am I? How much influenced by the Holy Ghost, and we're going to do center of my joy, please, y'all. How, how much of the influence of the Holy Ghost am I really under? I, I declare, saints, we don't want to live this life trying to impress everybody, everybody that we're really connected with Jesus. And when all is said and done, there's no keeper. Our spokes are exposed. Are we communicating? So I'm asking me, I'm asking every minister, I'm asking every deacon. I'm asking every musician. I'm asking every usher. I'm asking every singer. 
I'm asking every child. I'm asking every adult. I'm asking every preteen, every teen. I'm asking every senior citizen. Is Jesus the center of my life in every way? And am I surrounded by the keeping power of the Holy Ghost. Y'all hear me? Deciding what college you're going to attend is just as spiritual as deciding anything else. It's all spiritual. Now, if you really want to be Afrocentric, in the African worldview, the real African worldview, not the polluted view from the influence of other cultures on that continent. But in the African worldview, there is no secular. Everything in the African culture is sacred. So there's no aspect of my life that is secular. That is my business. Everything about every one of us is Christ's business. And I know for some of us, our, 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 our only one of our biggest regrets is we wish we had known this much earlier in life. Because we would have made some better decisions early on had we realized that everything about our life was rooted and grounded in the Christ of our lives. We would have made different choices. We would have made better choices about marriage, about careers, about everything, about everything. Children, grandchildren, great-grands, we don't want you suffering from the same lack. You need to know that now. Everything about you is Christ-centered. Yeah, had we known, some of our choices would have been very different. But we did not know. And we've got the scars to prove it. <laughs> But thanks be unto God, he did not let the ignorance of those years become an albatross for these years. I see glory to God and he's given us a chance to wrap it up a whole lot better than we started it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Paul said I had to get to the point where I couldn't live effectively remembering every mistake I made in the past. Paul said, I'm forgetting those things that are behind. Ah, God, some painful things, some dumb things, some unnecessary things, some wrong things are back there. Paul said, in order for me to pursue what's up there, I got to forget. If you're not saved, I got to offer Christ to you. He's got to be the center of your joy. He has to be the center of your joy. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm not telling you come join church like joining church is one spoke of the wheel. No, 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 no. Being a, a, a Christian is the very hub of the wheel. It informs everything about my, it, it informs what I read and what I don't read, what I watch and what I don't watch. It's who I hang with, who I don't hang with. So, if you need to be saved, I have no judgment, I have no condemnation. I'm excited about your future. 
why don't you come on if you're in this building right now make it known if you're at home get ready to confess it we're going to pray with you in just a moment and then we need at the end of of the the message and the prayer uh, uh, a number is going to be shown again uh, and a few minutes later if you call that number one of the ministers will minister to you according to meet your needs amen hallelujah now take a moment take a moment and let's be introspective not egocentric but introspective let's look within ourselves and really really tell the truth really tell the truth where am I compromised? Where am I weakened? Because I got some other stuff in the center where Jesus is supposed to be. I... All right, congregationally, everybody who knows it. Jesus, you're the center. Let's sing. Jesus. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope. For all I do, will you come if you need? Come on, let's say it again. Jesus. Jesus. You're the center of my joy. All that's good. You're the heart of my, of my contentment. Oh, for all I do. Jesus. We're going to sing it one more time. Anybody need to come? Now is the time. Jesus. Here in the building, there at home, at work, in the hospital, wherever you are, you can be liberated. He's just saying all or none at all. I really want to be the center of your joy. You're the heart. You're hope for all. You are, you are the center of my joy. Oh, Jesus, when I can't see my way, when I lose my focus of my joy, when my body's under attack, when my money ain't right, my joy oh Jesus you are you're the center of my joy Jesus you are yes you are the center of my joy when I feel lost Yes, you are. You are the center of my joy. When I'm feeling depressed, when I'm feeling frustrated, when I'm feeling lonely, when I'm feeling misunderstood, 
when I can't see my way. It's Jesus in the morning. It's Jesus at noonday. Jesus all night long. Nobody but Jesus. Jesus, my healer, my mind. Center up when I fall in love, when I felt abandoned, you were right there. One more time, Jesus, in my loneliness, when things aren't going right, the center of my joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all just keep playing from the top, Jesus. Keep playing it. Hallelujah. Can't you hear him today? All or none at all. All or none at all. I'm not judging you on your past. I'm talking about from where you are right now. I want all or none at all. I want to know I have your heart. I want to know you don't have any secret lovers. We've got to be centered on the works and the words of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. The first part of the prayer. Listen, listen, listen up, listen up, listen up. Listen, 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 listen. The first part of the prayer. Listen, listen, listen. The first part of the prayer will be for those who are making decisions right now. The unsaved who want to give their lives to Christ, the backslider who is coming back home. And then the last part of the prayer will be the help for those of us who are saved. And Hallelujah. We'll stay just with that chorus part now, just the chorus part, just the chorus part, just the chorus part. You see, I, I start where I started. If he's not the center, then there are, in fact, some aspects of our lives where the blood won't work. Not because the blood doesn't have the power. But if he's not the center, there are some aspects where we've blocked him out. And the blood isn't going to work. So in this first part, I ask if you would please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm one of the ones who needs to be saved. I want Jesus as the center of my life. I want Jesus as the center of my joy. I 
I want Jesus as my personal Savior and my Lord. I confess my sinfulness, my wretchedness, and my hopelessness without Jesus. Right now, I confess that I believe that you gave your son, Jesus the Christ. Jesus gave his life, and through the shedding of his blood, the sin debt, my sin debt, was satisfied. I received Jesus. My sin debt is paid. I'm free now from eternal separation from you. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I believe that Jesus is the Christ. I believe you raised Jesus from the dead. I believe he's sitting at your right hand, talking on my behalf. I believe he's coming back for his church. I plan to be in the number when he comes. Heavenly Father, I'm one of the ones who knew the way, who embraced the way. But through bad choices, sometimes bad company, sometimes just bad decisions, I drifted away, but today I heard you calling my name. I believe Jesus satisfied everything I needed to have reconciled relationship with you. I'm ashamed, I'm sorry, but I'm coming home. I blew it, but I'm coming home. I don't deserve another chance, but I'm coming home. Thank Essie for receiving me one more time. In Jesus' name, I'm back home now. I'm sold out now. Jesus is the center of my joy. I thank you for rescuing me from eternal damnation. In Jesus' name. Now, we need not repeat we, because I'm praying for all the rest of us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we don't come in our strength right now, but we come in our brokenness. We come in our weariness. We come, Lord, because we've fallen short of your glory. One way or another, bad connections, hard-headedness, hard-heartedness, even when some of us thought that the things we were doing were harmless, Lord, they drove a wedge between you and us and between Jesus and us. And, and in some silent, insidious way, we allow things and we allow people to creep in and they polluted our very being. Lord, we're sorry. We repent right now. We took obligations to other things more important than our obligation to you. We did what you wanted us to do when we felt like it, and we did the other things whenever other people expected us to do it. We made ourselves look sad even before unbelievers because they could influence us to not do what you wanted us to do to not stand where you wanted us to stand. Every arm of our existence, whether it's in the schools, whether it's in civic affairs, wherever it is, every arm of our existence has to be rooted in who Christ is and has to be con controlled by the influence of the Holy Ghost. Oh Lord, repair us now. 
Fix us now. Lord, I pray for our children. Our children are dealing with influences that many of us just don't understand. Uh, they're living in a world many of us just don't understand. Um, some are speaking languages that many of us just don't understand. They, their best friends are people we never met, sometimes from the other side of the globe. Lord, help us today. Help our children today. Rescue them from themselves. Rescue them from thinking they know everything. Rescue them from the the influences of things that will seduce them further away from you. Rescue them, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Help them to realize the only way they'll be able to stand is if Christ is the center of their lives and if he influences everything about their lives. And if they're kept by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray for the little babies who aren't speaking clearly yet and don't even know what day it is. I pray for those, all the more for those babies that are just tossed to and fro by folk who don't want babies, they just want bragging rights. I pray for those little babies who are being raised like wild weeds. I pray for the parents who are being irresponsible about their responsibilities for these babies. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I pray for our church and for churches everywhere. Lord, if we said we're going to teach our children, Lord, help us to teach them consistently, God. Not just when it's convenient for us, God. If we're going to be models for them, help us to be models for them consistently. Not just when we ain't got nothing else to do. Help us, Lord. Lord, we're in trouble. We're in trouble and while we're slacking off, while we're being negligent and while we're being egocentric, the enemy is, is, is picking our children off one by one, headed to the graveyard, headed to the jailhouse, headed to lives of crime. Help us, Lord. Help our elders, Lord, who are living in this strange land they know the property, but they don't know the land anymore because the ways of the land are foreign to them. Help our elders. Lord, I pray that you would dispatch angels around them to guide and to guard them on their way, God, to protect them from the intrusion of those uh, instruments in the hands of the devil. I thank you now for touching bodies. You are our God who heals us. God, we confess it, we profess it, and we hold you to your word. Heal today. Heal today. Heal today. Heal today. Heal today, Heal today. Heal today God. Regulate it, God. Fix what needs to be fixed. Bring down what needs to come down. Pull up what needs to come. Fix it, God. I pray for peace in our minds. The enemy has so many of us with troubled minds. I pray for peace today. Not only do I pray for it, but Lord, I confess it. It's in the atmosphere. I impart it to your children today. Peace, Lord. 
peace that displaces worry and stress and fear and frustration and doubt. Peace in the name of Jesus. I pray for wholeness in our spirits. No matter what history our history tells, I pray for wholeness now. We will not celebrate victimization, not another day. We will not live the rest of our lives talking about how sad and bad anything was. We can talk of it in historical terms, but we cannot talk of it as a present reality. God, it is in history. and We don't live there anymore. I, I speak wholeness in our spirits today. Thank you for forgiving us, washing us, cleansing us, and restoring us making us whole today and it's all happening even right now in this building and over the airwaves it's happening right now because Jesus is the center of our joy he is the center we claim it done now we claim the soul saved we claim the backsliders we claim we claim the, 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 the saints strengthened we claim bodies healed we claim minds regulated we, we, claim, we claim spirits made whole today by the power of the blood of Jesus in Jesus name we pray and we believe we blood blood saints say thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Christ alone is the center of our joy. Not Christ plus spouse, not Christ plus children, not Christ plus job, not Christ plus education, not Christ plus money. Christ alone. Each of us has had the opportunity to move any thing, any hindrances out of the way so that we may freely eat the bread and drink the cup. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, it was unleavened bread, so it wasn't a tasty bread. It was the bread of the Passover meal. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. So we believe when we eat this wafer of bread, we are participating spiritually in the experience of the brokenness of the body of Christ. Amen. After supper, after eating the bread, he took the cup, the fruit of the vine, blessed it, and as he distributed it among them, he told them this cup is a new testament, a new covenant, a new understanding in my blood. And he invited them to drink it. Well, Thank the Lord for loving us so much that he would not have us eat and drink unworthily. And uh, that being worthy is not just a simple fact of seeing whether I've done anything grossly wrong since last communion for which I've not sought forgiveness. But being worthy has everything also to do with realizing that Jesus alone is the center of my joy. If he is not, and I eat this bread and drink this cup, I am indeed eating and drinking unworthily. And 
He says, when I willfully eat and drink unworthily, I am eating and drinking damnation upon myself. So nobody else will condemn me. I'm condemning myself. Has, before I pray, let me ask, has everybody been served? Is there anyone who needs to be served? Let us pray. Yes, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come not in our strength, but in our weakness. Thank you for strengthening us where we're weak. Thank you for building, building us up where we're torn down. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. We are taught repeatedly that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There's no cancellation of sin. So we can only confess and profess that our sins have been forgiven today because of the shedding of the matchless Lamb of God, Jesus the Christ. That's why knowing him in the pardon of our sins and realizing that he paid our sin debt at Calvary it's so important to us. That's our very lifeline, Lord. So when we come to eat this bread of commun Holy Communion and to drink this cup of Holy Communion, we thank you for asking us to look within ourselves, to examine ourselves. And if there's anything that has, that's unconfessed that we need to put at the foot of the cross, giving us time to do that. If there's anything we need to release and let go, You've given us time to do that so that we don't eat and drink unworthily. Bless these elements. Lord, through the sharing of these elements, we are spiritually transported 2,100 years back to Calvary. to witness the horrific scene, the unimaginable brutality inflicted upon our Lord. And to see how he endured it all, even to the point of saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For every time we failed to hold up our end of the deal, thank you for forgiving us. For every time we've neglected your business so that we could handle our business, thank you for forgiving us. Lord, we don't want to test your kindness. So those things for which we've been forgiven, Lord, we Seek not to walk there anymore. Thank you for us receiving these elements for their spiritual value right now. Thank you that we are better having spent this time with one another in your word and in the sharing of Holy Communion. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. take this wafer of unleavened bread representing our Lord's body. May we eat the bread. small cup representing the blood, the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus the Christ. Remembering Calvary, may we drink the cup. Those here and those at home or wherever we may be who just shared in Holy Communion, blessed be the name of the Lord. We are grateful for this opportunity, this second opportunity in this calendar year. We thank God for his graciousness toward us.